Hi, quite a few people wanted me to do a teardown of this little pain in the ass button that failed on my aircon system. I'll link in the video if you haven't seen it. It was rather interesting and it has a dodgy contact in it. It varies anywhere from like, you know, a couple of ohms, like it should be like almost zero ohms really, um, but it varies anywhere from a couple of ohms, even if you press it really hard, up to many hundreds of ohms. And it caused a major problem if you're Design your switch matrix in such a way that it uses a single pin on your microcontroller and then analog to digital converter it switches in different resistance values in the uh, pull up resistor in a resistor divider in this uh, case and it, it's a neat way of course to uh, sort of an age-old way uh, to get multiple switches onto a single pin of a microcontroller or over one line in this particular uh, case and like you can do it over one line and stuff like that anyway um it's a neat way to do it but the downside of course is that if this switch develops any high internal resistance due to wear, corrosion, or whatever, then you're going to come a gutter. And it can, in this particular case, on my aircon unit, this is the on off button that failed. Um, and it actually, because it failed at a couple hundred ohms uh, in many cases, it would actually simulate, appear as though other buttons were actually being pressed. So I'd press the on off button and my aircon had changed from heating to cooling mode, for example. And yeah, it's just a, a really fascinating uh, insight. So a lot of people said they wanted to see inside this switch. Now, I don't know. So let's zoom all the way in with my Tagano. And here it is. <laughs> Pretty good. This is not digital zoom. This is all optical zoom, by the way. Um, and a lot of people wanted to see inside this. I'm not sure how much we're actually going to be able to see. In, inside this thing. That on the side's probably my uh, soldering iron getting the thing off, so don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look the best, is it? It's just a it's just a one hung low job, I think. Um, so I wouldn't be writing home to my mum about that. But uh, anyway, I thought we'd uh, tear it down and see what's what. We may or may not see something. I suspect it's just uh, corrosion. A lot of people because, you know, pesky oxygen in the air and all that sort of stuff. A lot of people uh, said that, oh, it just squirts, squirts some contact cleaner in there and it'll last for another decade. Yeah, if they're corroded, not really. It might fix it for, you know, a little while. Um, but then you're eventually going to come a gutter. So anyway, um, I'm not sure. I've never opened one of these tactile switches. Um, <laughs> so I, like, maybe can we get in there and maybe slice off? Is that a way to... Is that a way to do it? I don't know. If you've got a foolproof way of doing this, please let me know. Um, I'm winging this one. So let's, let's zoom out a bit there. So if my blood gushes out of my finger, you'll be able to see it. <laughs> so let's go. Yes, I've got my spongy mat under here. You can really see my... This is the one that came with my Tagano microscope. I assume it's like ESD. Well, it does have an ESD point on it. Yeah, it's definitely an ESD mat. Um, but I haven't actually got it connected. Mm, naughty Dave. Anyway, uh, let's... Okay, so... Oh, there we go. There we go. It just popped off. Right, I thought I'd have to force that. But, nope. So, oh, there you go. All right, this is... This is going to be interesting. Oh, let's lift that off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks like corrosion, doesn't it? Oh, that's the that's the snap dome on top. Sorry, no, that's the that that's the snap dome on top. There you go. So it just looked like rust. But uh, anyway, I've never seen a. Is that an accurate color? It looks like yeah, that's an accurate color. What you're seeing on camera here. It like it's hard to get the lights right and everything. It's all to do with uh, exposure and lights and whatnot anyway that yeah the plunger yeah that'll have a little knob in there and well let's see if our disc falls out yeah 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 there we go there we go that is our corroded disc you can definitely see that there is corrosion on both the snap dome yeah you can really see the corrosion in there where it makes con where the center of the disc, center of the snap dome makes contact. So if we flip that over, that should still that should still give us a snap. Yeah, there we go. You can see it deform like that. 
That's why they call them tactile switches, because they're based on these tactile domes. They can be different shapes, they don't have to be round like that. I've done videos going through, I've got a kit um, of different ones. There we go, that's the best zoom I'm going to get on the Tagano microscope. Not bad, considering 30 centimeters working distance. Look at the working distance of this thing. You can see the bottom contact in there. The, so the edge contacts over there, which uh, connect to the dome. I don't think they're the issue, because the side of the dome looks okay. So, like the, the edges are probably all right. But yeah, there you go, center of the dome and... That switch. So that's causing hundreds of ohms. Um, <laughs> yeah. Even if you like, you press really hard, the best I could get on it was like a couple of ohms. I could not, whereas a brand new freshy, you know, it's down in like the tens of milli ohms range, right? They're, they're really quite low, but uh, yeah, there you go. So I, I was surprised that we actually got to see something decent in that not much in is it that's a real cheaper construction one might be interesting to uh crack open a different type i can do that all right let's get my kit of switches here i can assure you these are the cheapest possible one hung low quality because these are like a kit that came on ebay for like you know two bucks delivered uh, for the whole kit just worth having right so these will be the absolute crappest quality i got the same size switch there so let's chop this one open and have a look so i wouldn't expect this one to be any better <laughs> at all it just looks just looks a bit fresher that's all there you go yeah it's still got you know like <laughs> it's not gonna stop any crap getting into it I don't know. Are any good quality ones any better? Does anyone know? Sorry, I don't. Oh, I've prob I could probably get a good quality one if I look through some of my project kits, like a known good quality Alps or something. But here you go. There you go. We're in. There you go. It's got a different color, snappy dome, but it looks almost identical, doesn't it? There. You go. Oh, there you go. There you go, that's inside a cheapie. Hasn't corroded yet. Um, does that have the ring? And that one's got a center ring around the center contact, like a ring around the center contact. Is that is that the, what they're using as the contact in there? Or is the other one didn't have that? Only had the single center contact. So quite a significant difference. There you go, quite a significant difference in the designs there. Which one, whether or not they're using that center contact, oh, you could buzz that out. Yep, yep, so that, that outer ring is actually connected through to that inner one, and then these outer bits here will be connected to the pin over here. Yep, so, yeah, so there you go, that's all one. So I guess there's uh, possibly two contact points on that one there whereas opposed to whereas we had a single one there and it didn't really have a dimple in it did it didn't really have a dimple it was just a flat contact whereas this one is actually look oh yeah, oh yeah look at that you can see that's really poking up there and i can i, I can feel that too okay yeah that one's really got a raised surface so that one's very different so it's never going to contact that outer ring so i'm not sure what's doing there so yeah, there you go. There's a significant difference between those two designs right there. And yeah, that's uh, corrosion. I'm not sure you would uh, get rid of that just by spraying some stuff in there. It'd probably help, you know. If you needed to get out of trouble, spraying it with some gunk, it'd easily get down the shaft or in the side or whatever. It's probably easier just to go down the shaft, really, and then squirt the whole thing. That'd help. It'd get you out of trouble for a bit, I suspect. But not going to get that off. In a hurry, still going to be there. So, yep, that is corrosion, I suspect. Is that just poor plating? I don't know. Any plating experts out there? Any metallurgists in the audience? There's always someone who knows. What does that look like? Is that like a coating? I mean, obviously, there's some wear issue there. Check that out. That's a good shot. Some wear issue. But, yeah, those larger patches on the side, they definitely look like corrosion, don't they? So please leave it in the comments down below if you know about your metals and your corrosions and stuff. 
Okay, I do actually have a known brand here. We've got a C and K, one of the uh, best brands out there, but this is one of their like low end ones, I think. And I uh, looked up the data sheet uh, for this and they don't specify the material on it. You know, it's got 100,000 lives, li switch actuations or whatever. <clears throat> um, 100 milliohms initial on resistance. So it's nothing special. I think this is just their bare bones, but it is a C and K. So let's crack open a C and K, shall we? Yeah, it looks very similar, doesn't it? Like the construction is exactly the same, but the inside could differ substantially so, but I suspect not. You know, we've probably just got a, you know, a phosphor bronze contact or something like that plated. And uh, silver, of course, is a common... Uh, that, one, that one's just not... That one's not popping off without a fight, is it? Oh, no, there we go. So, anyway, uh, usually they're like a stainless steel top. Uh, you can get uh, stainless steel material switches. And there you go. That one could be a stainless steel, but it looks very... Similar to the one we had over here, does it? Ah, oh, yeah, can't see. Huge. So that is that like a nickel plate? Or is that like a brushed stainless? I'm not sure. I'm not sure because it doesn't actually tell you. So there's your, there's your dome and there's your contact. They've just got... Oh, that's a bit different. It's got a split in it. Look at that. It's got two contacts. That's interesting. So there you go. So that would likely be a silver plated... Yeah, I that 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 looks silver plated to me. But once again, any metallurgists out there can tell just by looking at it. But um, of course, silver is mm, silver corrodes. Um, so yeah, but that that's interesting. See, that's got like a dual, you know, call that a dual wipe kind of contact. There's nothing else in the dome. The dome is just the dome. There's no like little nipple in it or anything. I like a good nipple. And of course, you know, changing the geometry of the dome and everything changes, like the tactile force and the tactile feel and, you know, everything. There's actually uh, uh, performance curves you can get. Uh, a good good data sheets for real uh, high-end switches will give you, like, the performance uh, curve. You know, if you go get, like, your Snaptron domes and things like that, they're full, as I've shown in previous videos, they're, like, fully characterized and stuff. But there you go. That's inside a CNK. So, eh, interesting. That's at least three... Reference points for you. I think I like, you know, the C and K looks the best. I mean, that contact. Like, just having the dual contact in there, I can really feel that. But you can see that raised up. Um, I really like that one. That's really nice. Um, although, this one in the eBay cheap, I mean, this eBay cheapy, it looks that, you know, it, it just the plating on that looks cheap, right? It looks cheap as compared to the C and K one, right? Look at that. CNK on the left, <laughs> eBay cheapy on the right. It's got all sorts of hairy, scary stuff inside the eBay cheapy, doesn't it? It doesn't look that great. So, but you know, look, that one's raised up. It's, oh, it's actually, yeah, it's got a hole in the middle. You can really see that now. That's pretty good. Wow. Anyway, there you go. That's the difference. Any of you uh, switch aficionados out there who are really into this sort of stuff, please. Leave it in the comments down below what your opinion is of the three switches there. There you go. Switch aficionados, let us know your thoughts down below. CNK, eBay cheapy in the middle, and then on your right, you've got the uh, the failed corroded one with a couple of hundred ohms. But that's, you know, possibly the end life of uh, most, you know, if you get like a silver plate or something like that, unless you get like a high quality uh, gold uh, plate one, uh, but yeah, it's <laughs> silver corrodes, you know, nickel, I guess, uh, corrodes as well. You get nickel plating ones and stuff like that. So, yeah, sure, there's lots of switch aficionados who'll fill us in in the comments. Anyway, hope you liked that video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up because that was rather interesting. So thanks to everyone who suggested I do that. I thought it'd be boring. It's not. This is interesting, damn it. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.